this is the government week in review for the week ending Friday, November 20th, 2023. I am Christian Mitchell. In the headlines, Minister for Health, Senator Jonathan Lecret outlines major restructuring plans for the health sector. Public education sessions continue on interim electricity tariff. And over 200 Grenadians deploy to gather information for agriculture census. Details to this and more after the break. The Ministry of Climate Resilience, the Environment and Renewable Energy invites you to participate in activities to commemorate CARICOM Energy Month 2023 throughout November. They will kick off with an exhibition on November 10th at Bruce Street, Killer Walks on November 17th from Old Trafford to Mon Rouge Playing Field, November 21st from Guelph Health Centre to St. Rose Modern Secondary School, and on November 24th in Karieku from the Hillsborough Playing Field to Behind Sands. There will also be a photo and a video competition that ends November 26th. The winner will be announced November 30th. Come out, participate, and enjoy all that Energy Month has to offer. Offer. For more information, contact the Ministry of Climate Resilience at telephone number 4400366. CARICOM Energy Month 2023. Accelerating innovation, driving electrification. Welcome back. Minister for Health, Wellness and Religious Affairs, Senator the Honorable Jonathan Lecret, has laid out some major plans for the health sector which would span the next three years. This was done at a special national health update this week which looked at achievements, programs and plans for 2024 and beyond. More in this report. Addressing a special national health sector update on Wednesday, which also included members of the ministry's senior management team, Minister Lacret noted that activities will be spread out over the next three years for some aspect of healthcare modernization to take place. Before the end of January 2024, actually, we are going to see, well, we're planning for before the end of the year. Um, to actually do a launch, what services might start, uh, services may um, commence in January of 2024 as it relates to the free obstetrics and gynecology clinic that we are going to be having here on island. We have signed a memorandum of understanding with the McKinney Foundation, Dr. McKinney and his team, to provide such services to women and to be able to assist in bolstering the skills gap where gynecology and obstetrics is concerned. So we are particularly pleased and proud about that um, as it is going to really help bolster the healthcare sector. The ministry is also preparing a number of policies that would guide the regulatory and operational framework by which the ministry functions, as well as legislations that will be brought before parliament in 2024. Our medical laboratory bill, our mental health bill, our tobacco control bill, our food and safety bill, the review of the Nurses and Midwives Registration Act, our Immunization Act, our Pharmacy Act, amendments to the Allied and Professional Healthcare Act, and the Private Hospital and Nursing Home Act. So these are some of the bills that we will take to Parliament during the year 2024 so that they can be enacted. Senator Lacret says plans for the ministry come 2024 also includes construction of Climate Smart, Climate Resilient Teaching Hospital, reconstruction of a drug rehabilitation and wellness center, and national health insurance. Reporting for the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Religious Affairs, I am Blossom Alexis Welsh. Minister for Health, Wellness and Religious Affairs, Senator the Honorable Jonathan Lacret, alongside senior community health nurse Hannah St. Paul, unveiled the official logo for the Be a VIP campaign. Launched on Friday at Radisson Grenada Beach Resort is a public awareness communication campaign on childhood vaccines aimed at informing parents and the general public on the benefits of vaccination, better enabling them to protect their children by knowing all the facts. The ministry hopes that this campaign will assist in returning Grenada's childhood vaccination coverage to the required 95% for primary vaccines like measles, mumps and rubella, tetanus and polio in the 0 to 4 year old age group. Addressing Friday's launch, Nurse St. Paul reiterated that a number of diseases in Grenada and by extension the Caribbean have been eliminated because of vaccine efforts. Vaccines, as you know, are one of our most powerful innovations in the history of medicine. 
smallpox is no more thanks to vaccines polio has been eradicated in our region thanks to vaccines the region can boast of being certified measles free for over 39 years thanks to vaccines once feared diseases like diphtheria tetanus measles and meningitis are now easily prevented thanks to vaccines the deputy chief education officer kathy and james hopes the campaign will bolster vaccination rates and fortify the health of the nation's children the re resonating slogan i am vaccinated i am immunized and i am protected transcends a mere public health initiative it's a resounding call to action for each of us to become a vip advocate cultivating a culture of health and well-being within our cherished tri-island state ps in the ministry of health wellness and religious affairs naomi jeremiah calls for partnership across the board to ensure the success of the vaccination campaign partnership with all and sundry we seek collaboration from all our parents our caregivers, our teachers, principal, the churches, the policy makers, persons of influence. We're calling on you today. Call us at the ministry. Let us talk. Let us hear what you can do, how we can work together with you to make this VIP a success. Minister for Health and Wellness, Honorable Jonathan Lecret, praised the nation's community health nurses for the efforts they have been making to boost vaccination islands-wide. I have been paying keen attention to the pop-up clinics that uh, um, you guys had for the past couple months trying to bring the vaccination or, and or immunization percentage back up to where we had it a number of years ago because of the hesitancy that we have been experiencing post COVID-19. And I also want to say that I'm pledging my commitment. And I want to look at you and say it, I'm pledging my commitment to lead the campaign. A series of public informative sessions is being held by the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission following the implementation of an interim tariff for electricity from October 1st, 2023. PORC's responsibility includes the assessment and establishment of rates charged by Grenlick to consumers to ensure they are fair and reasonable for consumers. The interim tariff was introduced following a thorough assessment of the existing tariff, which presented some gaps, including the inappropriate classification of renewable energy, unchanged non fuel charge, and the over under recovery of fuel costs. Regulatory economist Adrian Green said the process of review to address these gaps will take an estimated 24 months, and as such, temporary solutions were put in place. It is estimated, however, that that process can take up to 24 months or two years. What does that mean for us though? If it's going to take 24 months, but we have identified these three key issues that need to be addressed, what do we do? That's where the interim tariff comes into play. What is the interim tariff you might ask? Well, First, let's start with what an interim tariff is. An interim tariff is a temporary or provisional pricing structure or rate that is implemented while a more comprehensive and long-term tariff structure is being developed or revised. So in our case, we know that we need to move from the old tariff to the new tariff. We know what the process entails, and we also know approximately how long it's going to take. But in the meantime, there are issues that we would like to address immediately, and some of them can be addressed immediately. And in other cases, there were solutions that could be found to be used in the interim, and that's why we have an interim tariff. 
Acting CEO and Regulatory Accountant Jenna Jacob reiterated that the new renewable energy charge is not an additional charge to consumers. The non-fuel charge, she said, will be reviewed on an annual basis once the inflation rate figures are available until the cost of service study can be done. This will allow you to only pay to the utility the cost of fuel for the fuel energy that you consume on a month-to-month -month basis right nothing more nothing less um, as it relates to the renewable charge mrs green would have mentioned that the mechanism that was put in place did not speak to a renewable charge so and we you do know that the grenada has been increasing its renewable penetration throughout the years so there is renewable energy on the grid but you have been paying the fuel charge for that renewable energy Right? The renewable energy, as was mentioned, is significantly lower than the fuel charge. The fuel, the fuel charge. So what we wanted to do, we wanted to make sure that you earn a benefit by adding a renewable charge so that if you're consuming 150 kilowatt per month, you will be properly proportioned for the renewable, charge, the renewable energy you consume and the fuel energy you consume. Granted, most of the energy on the grid is from fuel, but we are, we are moving into a space where we want to increase the renewable energy on the grid, so the more renewable energy on the grid would be better for you because the renewable charge is significantly lower. Prior to October 1st, 2023, the tariff comprised three main parts, non-fuel charge, fuel charge and service charge. The parish-based sessions will continue throughout November into December. This is the Government Week in Review. When we return, Renata joins the OECS movement to accelerate regional integration. Your new Grenleg bill is even easier to read and still has all the valuable information you need to track and manage your usage. Hey mom, okay your friendly tech support is here. So you got the new Grenleg bill? Let's take a look. The new bill makes it even easier to see your bill total, the due date, and much more. And take a closer look. It actually is a lot easier to understand. Let me show you. You can still see exactly what the charges are for, but in a great new format, it even shows how the cost of generating and delivering the electricity to you is calculated using your actual usage. Anyway, Look who says hi, and see you soon. Your new Grenlake bill, easier to understand and easier to track your usage. Welcome back. Grenada and other members of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States will soon benefit from the implementation of the programs under the right project as part of the efforts to accelerate regional integration. The regional integration through growth, harmonization and technology rights initiative aims to enhance growth and competitiveness in the region to ensure the economic union is efficient and effective. Earlier this week, representatives of the Regional Integration and the OECS Communications Unit met with members of the media to foster closer relationships and also outline programs and plans for the OECS in accordance with Article 12.3 of the Revised Treaty of Basseterre regarding the contingent rights of members. Components of the rights project are currently being implemented by the OECS Commission along with various ministries within member countries. They include the OECS Unique ID, Border Management Systems, Social Security Benefits Portability, Enhancement of Tourism Competitiveness, OECS Border Tax Structure, among others. Head of the Regional Integration Unit, Kevin Hope, explained how the project will help countries accelerate regional integration. Wright has approximately at present 20 components, of which eight of those components reside with Regional Integration Unit. And of importance, when I spoke earlier about the mandate through the revised treaty of Bastyr, we have an opportunity for which the right program is perfectly aligned with our remit. So for example, the intention of right is really to assist with the implementation of the OECS Economic Union. So the resources provided is for us to work on strengthening our mechanisms to enhance ICT infrastructure and systems 
and more or less to support or catalyze other development resources with a number of our development partners within the region. What Wright is attempting to do in key economic sectors in, in terms of some of the funding is really to focus on those niche opportunities. So with respect to tourism, for example, two opportunities we are actively funding and implementing is historic tourism in addition to community-based tourism, opportunities for which the tourism spend can actually reside within the community in member states. Technical specialist in the unit, Shakeri Gravelis, said the focus right now is on the implementation of the contingent rights, which seeks to ensure there is equal treatment for all. Contingent rights fall, falls under two main categories, and they include general rights and social rights. Um, so large, largely, uh, the general rights are already in force, which are the right to enter, to live, to work, and to re-enter. Um, and what we are uh, advancing currently is the implementation of social rights as well as the access to general rights by the spouse and dependents of OECS nationals. As you would know, some OECS nationals are not married to other OECS nationals and they may be married to third country uh, persons, meaning persons who are, out, who are nationals outside of the economic union area. Um, and so when they come to the region and are uh, inspi aspiring to live and work here, that they may be treated the same as their OECS spouse. Um, so what we are in the process of advancing implementation for is access to those rights by the spouse and third country spouses and dependents, as well as social rights. And those social rights cover uh, equal treatment in terms of employment on the same terms and conditions. Uh, the right to access social security, social protection, education, and healthcare um, on the same basis as citizens of a, a host country, which is the country within which they decide to uh, reside. According to Dr. Clarence Henry, senior technical officer in the regional integration unit, as more people move, there is a dire need to strengthen border security to ease travel under the OECS Border Management Enhancement Initiative. He commended Grenada for its investment to ensure ease of travel for locals and visitors. Currently in Grenada, there is the use of the hard copy embarkation and disembarkation form that passengers required to fill before landing or at the point of landing in Grenada. The expectation is that by the second quarter of 2024, Grenada would join St. Lucia, would join St. Kitts and Nevis towards, towards yeah, implementing an online form so that passengers once landed at the Morris Bishop International Airport are able to be cleared much quicker and get on their business um, after arrival. We, we're working on um, the review of border procedures. As my colleague would have um, noted under the contingent rights, we, uh, and I would have highlighted as well, we, we receive food country nationals, right? And some of these food country nationals are related to the principal beneficiary who, who would be the OECS citizen. And consequently, we need procedures to allow for all of our protocol member states to receive those food country nationals in a similar manner. And so we are seeking to strengthen that as well. Grenada um, is one of those countries in the OECS. Um, in fact, I'm tempted to say the only one, but I know um, St. Kitts and Nevis is investing in kiosk machines, but currently the only member state, the OECS, with kiosk machines. Under the right project, we're committed to adding to those numbers of kiosk machines. The right project is being funded under the 11th European Union Development Fund. More than 200 individuals comprising 162 enumerators, 30 supervisors and 7 area coordinators are dispersed across Grenada to gather crucial agricultural data to support the 2023 Agriculture Census. We get more in this report. The 2023 Agricultural Census was officially launched at the National Stadium last Friday, signifying a significant event on the Ministry of Agriculture's calendar, with the primary objective being to acquire comprehensive data that highlights the status of Grenada's agricultural sector. Minister of State with Responsibility for Agriculture and Lands, Fisheries and Cooperatives, Senator the Honorable Adrian Thomas, signaled the official launch of the initiative. 
emphasizing its importance in building the foundation for informed decision-making, policy formulation, and the solicitation of external funding for the development of the agricultural sector. The last census was done sometime in 2012. That's a very long time. We're talking about 23, about 30 years ago. So many things may have changed. So many people may have come into the system. So many people may have left the system. So many people may have changed their style of doing things. So I think it is crucial that we do this, center, this census at this point in time. It is very important. And I want to tell you why. I had the privilege of attending quite a few meetings, regionally, internationally, and outside there. Nothing, absolutely nothing gets done if you don't have hard core data. And I must let you know, as Minister responsible for agriculture and lands, fisheries, forestry, cooperatives, I struggle at times to answer some of the questions that I've asked. So, I, as an individual, is particularly interested in this census. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture and Lands, Fisheries and Cooperatives, Aaron Francois, underscored the importance of accurate information in ensuring the census's success. He cautioned against falsifying data as it could jeopardize data quality and integrity, potentially leading to misguided interventions and programs. He urged enumerators to ensure precise information is recorded. And so to you enumerators, let me just uh, uh, issue the call. We want you to take the exercise extremely seriously. When you go out there, we want you to interview the farmers and to collect the information and to record it accurately. Because if you give us all information, if you don't record the information accurately, it means that the result we are going to be using inaccurate information. So I want to, I want to charge you with that, with that responsibility. To our supervisors and our coordinators, you have even a more important role than even these enumerators to ensure that the forms, the questionnaires are are, 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 are completed correctly and in a timely manner it is not just anyhow and anywhere in a timely manner we have a limited time to conduct the census and so you must make sure you must exercise your supervisory responsibility and your coordination responsibility to ensure that the census is done well Notably, this census is the first to be held in a decade, with the last ones conducted in 2012, 1995, 1981, 1975, and 1961. The initiative is a collaborative effort with the Central Statistical Office that has equipped enumerators to conduct a complete enumeration of the entire state, including Carriacou and P.T. Martinique. Census Coordinator Laverne Mapp explained the goals of the census, which encompass assessing the agricultural sector structure, identifying changes in land ownership and land use, and quantifying agriculture's contribution to employment. The various departments in the ministry, like land use, extension, and agronomy, would, have now, would now have an updated and adequate frame through which they would be able to carry out much needed periodic surveys that would measure some of the changes that can occur like the different crops that farmers plant especially for temporary crops and using this information those departments and other regional and international partners would be in a better position to develop and implement programs and projects that would be geared towards solving issues and problems that our farmers have identified through the census the ministry's approach to the census involves utilizing tablets with geographical indicators to pinpoint areas with agricultural activities. MAP explained that these tablets are equipped with specific location points to guide enumerators to their assigned areas. So they'll go to this building and they'll ask a few questions to determine whether or not any agricultural activity is being done in that building, whether by a person or entity. And um, if there is, how much, and that will determine whether or not you qualify as a farmer under this census. Now, if you have one or more cattle, 
five sheep, goat, pigs, or a combination of them. So that means you can have five or more of any one singular, or you may have two pigs, two sheep, and one goat. That's five. You're a farmer for the census. Also, if you have a female sheep, goat, or pig that you use for breeding, you're qualified. Um, 25 or more poultry, 25 or more permanent trees, quarter of an acre of temporary crops, and if, you have, if your income from the farm is more than 2,500 for the year. The 2023 agricultural census is slated for completion by February 28, 2024. Officials of the Environmental Health Department of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Religious Affairs have started an aggressive campaign known as trapping following an increase in the local mongoose population. 20 years after the introduction of mongoose in Grenada, the rodents have become an agricultural pest and prove difficult to control via hunting and poisoning efforts. Acting Chief Environmental Health Officer is Kenneth Hazard. In one on one day, I think, we had up to about 70-something mongoose trapped that was around the airport area. We have also had complaints from a number of communities of the presence of mongoose. We have had mongoose bites and dog bites. And so we are calling on the public when you um, do not try to engage mongoose, please. <laughs> <laughs> Especially those that would seem to be infected with the, the virus. He notes that with an increase in the mongoose population comes an increase of the risk of rabies. In case of bites from mongoose or with, um, from a bite of a dog or other animal that may be rabid, we're asking persons to take immediate action because this is a very deadly disease. And so we're asking persons who may have gotten a bite from a mongoose or a rabbit dog to immediately wash the wound with soap and water and to seek medical attention. Do not sit home. Mr. Hazard also dispelled rumors that have recently been circulated on social media. I also want to take this opportunity to dispel a claim that has been in the media recently, well, maybe social media, that we are out of treatment for rabies and to say that in fact we do have available treatment for rabies in Grenada. We take another break. When we return, His Majesty's prisons add three vehicles to its fleet. At the NIS, our team proudly works to support the evolving needs of Grenadians. We have made some changes to our operations and want to keep you informed. Firstly, we are happy to introduce the new unemployment benefit. This benefit will provide an insured person with 50% of his or her former income in the case of sudden unemployment. To support this benefit and other benefits we offer, it was necessary to increase the contribution rate. The contribution rate will increase gradually each year until it reaches 16% in 2031. As always, the contribution will be split between you and your employer. The pensionable age will also increase from 60 to 65 years. This increase will also be gradually reaching age 65 in 2029. Pensioners will continue to be eligible for a pension from age 60, but will receive a reduced payment. The NIS recognizes that the prices of basic customer goods are increasing globally. Therefore, we are happy to also increase the weekly minimum pension payment by 25%. Finally, we have adjusted our survivor's benefit payment to a percentage of the age pension minimum. Widows, widowers, and dependent parents will receive 100% or $58 weekly, while children will receive 50% or $29 weekly of the deceased's pension. We are here to make the transition to these new changes as clear and simple as possible. If you have any questions on how these changes impact you and your family, please contact our new informational hotline at 440-6647 or visit www.nisgrenada.org. Thank you for allowing us to be your social security provider. Welcome back. 
His Majesty's Prisons Administration has received three new vehicles which will be used to transport staff and inmates of the prisons. The vehicles were donated by the government of Grenada and handed over to the staff on Thursday, November 9th. The Prisons Administration welcomed the donation of vehicles which will help to improve the efficiency of its operations. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of National Security, Carlene McQuilkin, presented the keys for the two Kias and Isuzu to DMAX to the acting commissioner of prisons, Rupert Nichols. It's a long time now they have been clamoring for new for vehicles. A lot of the vehicles that they've had are outdated and um, have to undergo a lot of repairs and so. And we are pleased that the ministry was able to source the funds uh, from the Ministry of Finance. So we want to say thank you as well to the Ministry of Finance for acceding to our request for the purchase of some new vehicles. And most of the times it's not often that you get so many vehicles for an entity at one time. So we want to say a very special thank you to the Ministry of Finance for purchasing these vehicles for us. Um, I want to admonish and um, encourage the persons who will be driving the vehicles to take their time to driving the vehicles, to take care of it as if it was their own. I wish that um, all the work that has to be done by the prisons, it can be uh, done in a, an appropriate way and a suitable way and more efficiently because you have acquired these new vehicles. The acting commissioner is elated that the demands of the prisons are being met. He gives the assurance that the vehicles will be handled appropriately. On behalf of His Majesty's prison administrative staff, officers and inmates, I would just like to say how grateful we are for these three new vehicles. I know that the PS, PS McCulkin from National Security and Ministry of Finance would have worked hard for us to have these three new vehicles here today. Actually, it's four because we, are, we also have a passenger bus for the transportation of staff on others. So it's three presently here today, but um, it's four vehicles that was purchased for him at His Majesty's prison. So once again, we are very grateful and we could assure P.S. as she made the point that the vehicles would be taken care of and we will do all within our powers to ensure that it remains safe at His Majesty's prison. Father Carl Haynes proclaimed a blessing upon the vehicles. Fisher folk across Grenada are being reminded of the annual fishing vessel inspection in the month of November. The exercise is carried out by the Fisheries Division of the Ministry of Agriculture and Lands, Fisheries and Cooperatives. The inspection entails the examination of vessels to determine compliance with minimum safety standards and to ensure they are equipped with stipulated safety items as required by the Fisheries Regulations SRO 3 of 1990. The exercise comes on the heels of a capacity building initiative for fisher folk organized by the fisheries division. Lisa Chetram, chief inspection officer, leads the team of officers conducting the inspection. This is an important mandate for the fishing industry because we en endeavor to ensure that all the fisheries or all the fishers within the industry are kept safe. And by doing so, there are required items like your life jackets, your radio, your GPS, and uh, several other items that is used to conduct in terms of safety and navigation. We had started on the 1st of November, today is the 6th. We have done Carinage, Grand Mall, Melville Street, Marigot, and all these areas, we had total compliance. And the, and the turnout from the fishers is exemplary. So, of course, thumbs up to the fishers for conducting your inspections thus far and of course I know that as we continue during the course of the month we are going to have a lot more persons coming out to ensure of their safety. The annual fishing vessel inspection will continue to the end of November 2023. Owners of registered and licensed fishing vessels are asked to be in their respective areas on the date and time scheduled for inspection. And finally, 2023 kayak mass groovy monarch Matthew Mr. Golden Thomas says the focus for 2024 is to produce good music that the people can enjoy and that can earn him bookings in regional and international events. Mr. Golden spoke with the GIS team which covered the recent corn festival in Karakou. The plans right now is to just create good music 
for the tri island states overall and to be as marketable as possible towards my island and to get great music out there and to collab with other artists so that we can create, you know, a bigger attraction towards Mass 2024 and beyond. He says the response his music has been receiving and his second place position in Grenada's Groovy Mona competition serves as a greater encouragement to produce top quality music. It gives me a great feeling, you know, and then what I was walking towards is to get rid of the unknown. And I think that I've been doing, you know, the right job of getting rid of that. So here on is just going forward with confidence and, as I say, like trying to create better music, you know, greater hits, bigger hits, and collaborating with other artists from different islands so that we can create, you know, good music going forward. So, yeah. The return of Finber Short Pre Andrew is another plus for Kayak Mass 2024. Well, it's a good feeling when someone that has been there contributing for the years before and to help bring Kayak Mass on a level that has decided to come back into the art form, you know, because he has a lot of fans that are interested in his music. So it's all greater things and that too is an attribute towards getting people to come over to Kayak Mass and making it bigger and better. So it's a good thing and it's a positive thing. So big up Shark Pre. That brings us to the government's week in review for the week ending November 10th, 2023. I am Chris and Mitchell. Thank you for viewing.